On this episode of Salt and Siren, we head back overnight to the boat. Also, we could do some fun projects and some not so fun projects. And then it was another trip back home so we could get a little work done, me and my girls, as well as catch up with some old friends. And I had a little time to work up something special for all of our little board friends. Just like that, two weeks in Indy gone, and we're already back to the boat. Welcome. On our 10 hour trip south, we always run into a few interesting people, and this trip was no exception. I appreciate all your service. <laughs> Have you ever seen so many Lincolns in one Cracker Barrel? I think not. I didn't get the full picture of what it was that they were doing. I assume a special event, but it was really fun to meet you all. Thanks so much for the pictures. Okay, back to the boat, but first, an update. All right, I didn't show you guys how this project ended up. Uh, we just ended up doing a black contact paper for this little, I guess, update <laughs> until we decided to do a galley remake. So I'm happy with it. Um, it's a little problematic to try to get it, you know, around all the little corners and what have you. So it's not a perfect kind of thing, but I'm definitely happy with it being just updated for now, and it's such an easy fix, honestly, so why not? It cost me like $12. <laughs> if you're thinking about tackling the same kind of project in your galley, I'm going to go ahead and link up the marble paper that we got at Lowe's and the black contact paper that we got off of Amazon below. As many of you know, we're renaming our boat from September Song to Salt and Siren. And that means prepping a transom for the new name. I removed the lettering and Todd is compounding before we actually put it up. So we use compound and then we wiped it down with acetone um, after washing it and let it dry real well before we attempted this very stressful project. <laughs> what we've learned is that it's supposed to be a wet application and it's just too wet or we got it too wet so we did this side as a wet that's why it's still on and this one was a dry application it went on a lot easier so i'm glad we started with the little india indianapolis before we tackled this <laughs> yeah i'm not sure the the wet application you basically spray the boat down before you apply it is so that you can um shift it around a little bit don't mess up the pee. Shut up. We'll have to redo the... the um, See how it's coming up still? Yeah. We'll have to redo the lettering anyway. I think when we repaint the hole or... Or, or um, yeah, wrap it. So there's Indianapolis. Oh my. It's not on very many boats, but it's on ours. <laughs> oh no. Smug. Popular port city. There's Kiki here on this. So we're gonna cut the end out so we we can let the gaffs because the butt has an angle to it. The it is. It's like a, a couple angles. It's like yeah. this angle and then it's this angle. And then there's a point. There's a crest that runs right from that light down. Is kind of the center line. So we're gonna cut. We've leveled these out, so we're, we're taping salt separate from and separate from sand. So there's actually three different pieces. Then we can lay this, we can lay this flat, mm -hmm. and lay this flat, so we're not dealing with like a gap that sticks up when we try to bend around this corner. Because so. it's lifting up the letters next to it. Right. Right. Yep. Okay. Look real good. Freaking stressful. <laughs> And here is the final product. We are super happy with it, even if it was a very stressful project. And if you would like to rename your boat, I will leave a link to the company that we used below in the description. 
We even had time for a little break, and the best part about being in the boatyard is having conversations with our boatyard neighbors. So thank you, Joe, for coming over and sharing your stories with us. We've been up for a total of 20 minutes, and this is what I get. <laughs> He gets, he gets to deal with the toilet, and I get to deal with that. Well, the toilet is secured to the floor, but it's on like this little step. And not, there's not a good way to get underneath it, so I'm thinking that it's actually built onto this pedestal. One idea is to take this trim off and see if we can actually pull the pedestal out. Looks like the flushing mechanism and the bowl are separate. Maybe if I just got the bowl out of the way, we could figure out what's going on. But I know we can't easily get underneath here because there's no access. Oh, there's no access because right in there next to the kitty's box, um, there is a tank there. So we can't go in the, through that little door. It's like literally as soon as you open the door. And then the other access point would be here. <clears throat> but there's a wall here in between, so even under the boat. So that's not really an option either. Got lots of movement. All right. It's because it's connected. Oh, the oh, hoses and stuff. <clears throat> so if you're wondering what the heck we are doing here and you're just joining us here on Salt and Siren, we are taking out our traditional toilets out of our heads and moving over to a composting system so we can avoid using a black tank. Now what we thought would be a fairly easy project, we do have two of them to do, of course is never an easy project because what project is easy on a boat? <laughs> it's actually a little rare to see Todd that upset over a project because he's one of the most patient people I know. Uh, but it was, it's just a challenging project and so we only ended up getting one of the heads out. We still have another one to do. And after that fun debacle, it was time to head home. 10 hours, so we had a full work week ahead of us as well as a busy weekend. I wrapped up one of my businesses, so I did get to see some of my very best girlfriends to do that. And then Todd had a 30th high school reunion, and it's been really fun to get to know these people over time, so it was great to see all of you guys. And can you believe it? It's been 30 years. I'm so excited. You guys know what this is? <laughs> Can't believe it. It's happening. Something that Todd and I have been working on for a while now is opening up a live aboard store. So as we were looking online for fun lifestyle shirts for this community, we had a hard time finding something that really spoke to us, to us and the live aboard and the looper communities. One of the best things about all of you is connecting with you. And when you advertise your lifestyle on a shirt, sometimes it's the perfect icebreaker while you're out and about or at the marina or ship store. So over this particular weekend, I got our designs loaded up on our site and they're now available for those of you who wanna connect like we do with other live aboards. I'll leave that link in the description below. And just like that, two weeks passed and it's time to head back to the boat because we have a rather large project list before we go back in the water. We arrived overnight at about 3 a.m. And so the next morning we woke up and decided to finally empty out the car, run and get some groceries and supplies that we would need for the rest of our weekend or really just one day of work. And you know, it's always uh, fun trying to navigate your boat while it's out of water. <laughs> You're welcome for that. <laughs> it didn't take Todd very long to completely destroy our salon and for me to find him in all kinds of inconspicuous spaces and places, usually with a profanity here or there. And this was after, of course, he saved our cat from our bilge. That was fun. Gosh, our life is just so glamorous. I left Todd to do some of that dirty work, maybe because I didn't, I was a little afraid. If I'm being truthful, I was a little afraid. <laughs> 
So I decided to take on a sanding project that I was trying to finish up with doing the railings, or not the railings, the actually the grabs, which ended up turning into a bigger project because all of the wood on our boat really does need to be, you know, refinished. There is layers and layers, and did I mention layers of varnish that need to come off? And so I got to work, a different kind of work, and I may or may not have gotten Todd's blessing on this one. Executive decisions, right? So now, I'm just hand shave, hand sand. Shave this down a little bit because there's a lot of stuff on it. All right, let's check on Todd and see how he's doing. <laughs> so I pulled Janae away from her project to come help document the situation we're in. Awesome. We're going to have to get some stuff moved in preparation of mounting the sea strainers. And a lot of this is old existing stuff, copper lines and so forth. So I think on the starboard engine we're going to move some stuff, move the fuel pump and kind of reroute some things so that we can actually get all of these parts and pieces to fit inside this little area. Um, on the port side, everything is the fuels on the fuel all the fuel delivery system is on the is on the outside of the boat. So really it's just cleaning up and making room for the uh, washout kit and the sea strainer and all the hosing and stuff that's going to be uh, required and spacing and stuff. So um, yeah I think that's where we're at. So this is the port engine, or I'm sorry, the starboard engine. And what you can see is uh, that's the fuel pump. This is the line going to the engine. Through the fuel pump on this copper line that comes into the fuel filter right there. So what we're going to do is replace this copper line that is old, kinked, things like this are probably hurting our fuel delivery because this pump's probably working pretty hard to get through these kinks. Uh, basically going to get rid of all this and replace it with braided, with a braided line. We'll probably move this pump here, bring the braided line over to it, get another braided line down to the fuel filter and probably end up mounting the sea strainers on this column here and this column here. So I left Todd in the engine room to play, if that's what you call it, and I finished up some sanding for the day and then we called it a night. We were exhausted. Good morning. Another partial day on the boat because we have to um, take off and go back to Indy, but we are going to try to get a couple things before we leave done. So yesterday I didn't show you everything that I did do, so I'm going to go ahead and show that and please don't mind how absolutely tired I look. Let me show you. <laughs> you can see the remnants of a project down there. <laughs> I ripped that board off that you saw a few episodes ago because it is falling because it's just too heavy so I found another solution so we're gonna get it it's cheaper anyway so I gotta sand all this off which is gonna be so fun <laughs> to do this is like the only parts that really like yeah stayed so I'll be sanding all of that off to prep for another thing Ugh. so anyway that wasn't what I wanted to talk to you about this is what I want to talk about. So these railings I did while I was here um, on my own last month and I wanted to get all those railings sanded and I did except for this one I got it finished and then I'm like well, what's stopping me from just doing the railings you know because they really need the help. So I started that and that wasn't a part of the original plan and I always gave myself more work. <laughs> so I got um, not a ton done but I did get all of this section done so it's looking really nice took some elbow grease came off I did the bottom section 
as well. And then I got around to these sections as well. Here, and so, yeah. And I did get the bottom done a little bit. Now, the right way to do this would be to remove all of the white paneling. We don't really have time for that, so I won't be doing that. <laughs> I figure at least this way the wood will be treated we'll go ahead and get it stained and I think it'll at least be so we're not getting splinters on it and things of that nature so it's not the ideal way of doing it all of it needs to be kind of taken down and done properly but I'm trying to get it so I don't get a staph infection by touching the railings of my boat <laughs> just getting it sand it down and smooth again and get it treated so that way we can get moving because we're going back in the water in a couple weeks. <laughs> I had our house looking so good and now it's just destroyed again. <laughs> it might be because of you. <laughs> I'm not pointing any fingers or anything. <laughs> pointing the camera. <laughs> So we ended up getting the rest of the engine work done and partial sanding done, which allowed us to plan ahead for our sea strainers and washouts for our next trip. On the next episode of Salt and Siren, we actually had our separate ways. Todd heads north back to work and I head south to spend time with my son in the destination that our boat will soon call home. We would love it if you hit that subscribe button. That is super appreciated. And we uh, hope that you'll come back to hear what we have on the horizon. Thanks for watching. See you next time.